Welcome to Data Viz Daily. I'm Kevin McGinley, and this episode is part three in a three part series where I'm comparing Oracle data visualization to Tableau. The first episode was largely about showing their similarities. They're very similar tools that can do a lot of, you know, very similar things, and they go about it in a very similar manner. In episode two, I kind of focused on some strengths of Tableau things that it does um, fairly well that Oracle Data Visualization just hasn't matured um, to be able to do yet. In this episode, I'd like to sort of flip that coin a little bit and just talk about some of the things that Oracle Data Visualization does well that's either not quite as intuitive in Tableau or it, it you know doesn't do so well at it altogether. Um, and that's really, you know, one of the first points that I want to kind of highlight here with Oracle Data Visualization. So while one of its weaknesses is the fact that it's a less mature tool, hasn't been worked on, developed on over the, the sort of, you know, 10 year span, 10 year plus span that Tableau has, one of the things that it has going for it is the fact that it's a very straightforward and easy to use tool. Now that's, that's a, you know, phrase that's been used a lot with Tableau, and I think a lot of people would argue that Tableau is a fairly easy to use tool in comparison to other sort of enterprise BI tools. Um, but some of the things that I'm going to show today, um, you know, we'll call that into question a little bit because while Tableau is easy to use and is also very powerful, um, it's the fact that there's all that power in there and all the different options um, that kind of leads it to not having, you know, sort of a very intuitive approach to doing things. So what you're looking at here is a data story that I created with Oracle Data Visualization around UFO sightings. And what I want to highlight here are a few things that I did in this um, story that, you know, aren't quite as easy or straightforward in Tableau. Um, so the first thing here is that um, I've got sightings by year. And this data set actually spans from the beginning of the 19th century uh, till almost present year, 2014. And uh, what I did is I kind of broke the story up by time periods. And because I wanted to show that there were definitive events in sort of history that change the trajectory of, of how many UFO sightings there were uh, around the world. And this first one here is uh, Roswell in 1947, which you can see that data point here. And what I wanted to showcase is that in the prior year, 1946, um, which is represented by this constant line here, pretty much from 1947 all the way through the mid 60s, you know, we've got a very strong upward trajectory of sightings um, since the time of Roswell, with it only dipping back down to the levels of 1946 uh, in the year 1948, and from there it pretty much shot up. Um, so to do this constant line here that you see that represents the year 1946, this was pretty easy. All I had to do was right click on the visualization and add a reference line. That reference line is something that I could configure to be a, a line that's you know an average. Um, I could pick a minimum, a median, a maximum, and a constant, which is what I did. And it was just as simple as sort of typing in a number here. So you know that's a pretty straightforward uh, you know sort of way to add a reference line. Pretty intuitive, very easy to to do. If we come over to Tableau. Um, of course, I got to pick Tableau to do that. Um, I have a very similar chart here. So I've, I've focused on 1947 through 1964. I've got this sort of same, you know, year trend line going on here. And this is great, but now I want to add a reference line. So I'm going to right click in the same way that I would do with Oracle Visualization. And I get a variety of different options here, um, some of which are sort of apparent to me and some of which are not. So the first thing is I've got trend lines. Well, this isn't really a trend line. This is a constant line. So I doubt that this is the thing that I want. I definitely don't want to forecast. Um, you know, maybe I'm savvy with the tool and I understand what drop lines and annotate are. But if I'm sort of new to the tool, maybe I really don't know what those are and how they're different than maybe a constant line um, or a reference line, if you will. So I might fool around with trying to, to do these items first. Um, as it turns out, those are not the things that I want. Um, when it comes to doing a reference line, I actually have to come over here to the axis that I want to do the reference line for and right click there. Here I can add a reference line. Now what that ultimately ends up doing is 
you know, sort of giving me this, you know, fairly sophisticated, and again, this is sort of showcasing the power of Tableau, what kind of reference line I want to add. Um, but, you know, lots of options here, so I really have to think about what I want to do. And what it really boils down to is I need to create a new parameter. Now, parameters are a great feature that Tableau has that Oracle Data Visualization doesn't. Um, but, you know, it is not necessarily intuitive that I would go there to do this. So I could come in here and create a new uh, uh, parameter called 1946, give it a value of 10, hit OK. And now that gets added to my uh, line chart as a reference line. Now, it also does put a nice label here, which is handy on, on Oracle Data Visualization. You saw that it only used the word constant. Um, so this is definitely a little bit more clear what this line represents. But how I had to get there was not necessarily super intuitive, um, and it would have taken a very casual user you know, quite a bit of time to get there. So that's the first thing that I want to call out. So let's go back to Oracle Data Visualization here and hop over to another visualization. So in this one, um, what I wanted to sort of showcase here was the difference in outliers between a span of a certain number of years and the entire data set. And I'm basically taking the row counts against each other in a scatter plot to show the sort of distribution difference between the points. And I use the outlier function um, you know, within uh, Oracle Data Visualization, which basically allows me to just sort of one click uh, add outliers to a visualization, in which case it highlights, you know, these specific uh, points that are outside the concentrated norm of where most of the points fall. So this was, you know, sort of great for Oracle Data Visualization. Um, in the world of Tableau, unfortunately, on a sort of standard sheet, you only get one visualization or one thing going on at a time. Now, I could create a dashboard here where I could actually put two scatter plots side by side. But, you know, sort of in the world of actually trying to sort of build a story of, of, you know, sort of how this works, I would actually have to build these two scatter plots that you can see here side by side that really call out the distinction between one filter set and another. Um, I'd have to actually build that on two separate sheets um, within Tableau. Now, the outlier thing is also interesting because um, you know, if I right click here, I don't really have any kind of outlier function. If I come over here to analytics, um, I don't have any kind of outlier function here. So really the only thing that I can do, which isn't exactly the same as identifying outliers, is to use the cluster function, which allows me to drag that on here. Um, it can create the clusters that I want. Now in this case, it automatically defaults to four. Um, but if I wanted to, and I know how to do this, I can come in here and edit the clusters, um, change the number of clusters to two, and then I sort of kind of get something that I was looking for. Um, but again, it's not the same as identifying the outliers, and I can't really put those two things side by side. Um, so this is an area where Oracle Data Visualization, that easy ability to add outliers, as well as having multiple things on the canvas at the same time, was a clear advantage. So jumping back to Oracle Data Visualization now, let me jump to another visualization here. And here again, now I'm not going to call out again, I've got two visualizations going on at the same time. Um, I'm not going to, you know, sort of beat that, uh, you know, horse to death that, that Tableau can't uh, do that as easily. Um, but what I do want to call out here is I've got a line chart by day of the year. Um, so this is, I'm just taking the date, uh, and I've got a very easy function here that allowed me to create day of the weird year. Now, if I come in here and edit this calculation, um, and I go to, you know, the functions, there's a very clear day of the year function available. In Tableau, I can still do this, but it's, again, not quite as intuitive what I need to do. Now, Tableau is really good about not having to build out all of those date functions. It actually provides you some most commonly used ones that you can select very quickly just through this dropdown. But when the thing that you're looking for isn't there, um, you actually have to uh, sort of go into to, you know, sort of filter mode. Now, 
or uh, go into function mode. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Um, and you can see here we've got this um, date part function. Now if I come over here to data um, and I just want to create a new calculated field um, based on date part, which is really the thing that's um, you know taking part of a date timestamp and, and pulling out the appropriate thing, you can see here this is the help that I get. Um, so it gives you an example. It shows you how you can take the month out of a date and you get, you know, four, etc. But it, it isn't very clear here what are all the different options. It's not till I go out to Google land that I can figure out, well, hey, if I want, I can actually, um, if I edit this in the shelf, I can change this day to day of year. Now that's fairly intuitive. Don't want to knock it too much here, but it would have been nice if that were listed out somewhere, easier to find. Um, because ultimately it's, it's, you know, sort of not too intuitive. And then what's kind of weird about that step there is I've got to change this to uh, a dimension so it's not a measure. And then I can get my, um, you know, day of year, uh, you know, sort of calculation going there. And I get my 365 days. So, you know, that's something that's, um, you know, again, I could do it, but it wasn't super easy to, to, to get to that point. I had to figure that out and spend time figuring that out. Okay, next one. Let's look at this guy here. So this is by hours of the day. So here we've got, um, you know, 0 through 23. So if we're on a 24-hour time, 0 represents 12 a.m., 23 represents 11 p.m., and what I'm trying to show here is that the hours of 9 and 10 p.m. or 21 and 22, I'm trying to call those out. And I'm using color to do that. And in Oracle Data Visualization, I can easily come in here, right click on something, and I go to this color option, I can very easily say, okay, well, I want data point 21 uh, to be a certain color. Uh, and you can see here, if I come in here to manage my data assignments, I've set 21 and 22 to be that particular color. So pretty simple. Again, a simple right click, the option that I needed was right there. If I come over to Tableau and go to a sort of bar chart that does that for me, um, first off, if I right click on 21, there isn't anything here related to color. Now I do have format, um, and if I open this format, it doesn't really kind of give me the thing that I want to do. I do get this sort of format shading, but that's really more about the, the chart as a whole um, versus that particular data series point. Um, so that doesn't work so well. Now what I can do is come in here to color on the marks and change the blue to a gray. So I can accomplish that. Um, now what I need to do from there is I have to come in here and highlight both of these guys create something called a set, which, you know, is somewhat intuitive in terms of, you know, what it is and what it's doing, um, but not necessarily intuitive that I, uh, you know, have to do that. Then I can take these two popular hours, drop them on color, and allow them to be colored differently than the other bars. So again, possible to do, but it you know, feels like a very roundabout way to get there um, to do that sort of very simple task of, hey, I want this particular thing to be a certain color. Okay, so then the last thing that we're gonna focus on here is a map. Now, Tableau has great map functionality, um, but one of the things that Oracle has done nicely here with is how this particular map um, ends up being presented. So I'm really trying to get you know, what I would call sort of a density map. Um, you know, I'm not really interested in specific data points. Yes, I'm plotting latitude and longitude, but it's more about color density here. Where do I've got darker sort of areas of red versus lighter areas of red? And you can see here, I've got some concentration right in the Midwest. I've got some concentration along the West Coast. And that, you know, relatively stands out, uh, you know, pretty nicely to me. If I come over to Tableau, Yes, I can uh, plot, oh, and I need to drop in here um, uh, my date. Sorry, I forgot to create that. Calculated field, so we'll do date part. Oops, if I can type properly. And we'll do day of year. And we'll go ahead and end that. 
and we'll call this day of year and hit OK. Now if I drop day of year up here, actually it got created as a, uh, let's convert that to a dimension, day of year, drop that in here, and we want to find 185 because that's the day that we're searching on. Hit OK. And we get uh, a little bit, you know, sort of closer to what we're looking for here. But, you know, sort of notice that, um, you know, we, we do get this sort of uh, range of colors here. But, you know, the, the way that this is sort of plotted on a very specific point basis, um, you know, I don't really get that sort of fuzzy density uh, effect that I'm looking for. And it's really hard to see where the darker colors are because, you um, you know, ultimately uh, some of the points are overlapping each other and sort of covering each other up. Now I can come in here and, and do some, you know, sort of color formatting, if you will, um, you know, change things around, um, you know, I can change the stepping, I can go to more sort of advanced, um, you know, make it a little bit larger of a start and an end. Um, you know, I can do things like change the border effect in Halo, but none of these, and I'm not going to sort of waste your time trying to do that, none of those ever really gets the sort of look and feel that I'm look, looking for out of the Oracle Data Visualization Map. So again, you know, uh, you know, not, not trying to sort of um, showcase here that, you know, each tool can't do certain things or, or isn't as good at certain things, um, just to be sort of condescending to that tool but really trying to showcase here that each tool sort of has its strengths and weaknesses. And for all, um, you know, sort of the immaturity that Oracle Data Visualization has, one of the things that is nice about it is that there are a lot of things that are very simple and straightforward to do and very intuitive, where Tableau, while it has a very strong plethora of options, those options tend to be buried under menus, dropdowns, labels, um, and, and other sort of configuration panes that get a little daunting for the, the casual user. So the sort of takeaway from this is that if you are someone who can take advantage of the power of Tableau, if you're someone who's got that sort of sophistication to you know, use those, and in some ways you can almost think of yourself as the equivalent of like a, you know, an Excel ninja, um, then, then Tableau might be the tool for you. But if you're going to be someone that's you know a little bit more casual, don't want to spend as much time thinking about how to do something, and are fine with pretty you know sort of straightforward visualizations and, and a straightforward approach of presenting your data, data visualization from Oracle is actually going to be a little bit faster for you to get started with and, and use more easily and quickly. So for this three-part series of Oracle Data Visualization versus Tableau on Oracle, yeah, on DataViz Daily. I'm Kevin McGinley. Thanks for watching.